Good evening, Penn Staters, and thank you for joining us. Where else would you rather be? I'm Paul Clifford, CEO of the Penn State Alumni Association, and welcome to this evening's discussion on name, image, and likeness. If you're tuning in and you're a member of the Alumni Association, thank you for your support. The Alumni Association supports Penn State athletics year-round because we know Penn Staters are passionate about their Nittany Lions and seeing them succeed. As one example, our, we extended our sponsorship of all Penn State varsity sports programs senior days, welcoming our student athletes into the alumni family and letting them know that they are Nittany Lions for life. One major change that has shifted the landscape of collegiate athletics is the NCAA's new name, image, and likeness policy that went into effect earlier this year. We're hosting and facilitating tonight's conversation so that alumni and all Penn Staters can learn more about this topic, its impact on Penn State and our student athletes, and how you can get involved. We're gonna have a good discussion tonight. We're encouraging you to participate. One of the features available on your audience console, you can view slides, you can hear uh, presenters via the main stage, you can view our, view our closed captioning as well. We have an outstanding group of speakers tonight and they wanna hear from you. Another option on that audience console is your ability to submit questions for tonight's speakers. We'll be passing along questions throughout the evening and we'll get to as many as we possibly can. Thank you again for tuning in. Let's bring our guests into the program. First, I'm gonna welcome the Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics, Sandy Barber. Sandy's joining us and she's gonna discuss some high level points for name, image, and likeness. Penn State's role and what alumni and fans should know. Good evening, Sandy. Thanks for joining us. Good evening. Great to be with you, Paul. We're also going to hear how this new policy will impact recruiting and our current student athletes with head women's basketball coach, Carolyn Keeger. Coach Keegs, how are you this evening? I'm doing great, Paul. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited. From the business side, football letterman Justin King will share his insight as an entrepreneur and business owner of LIG Sports Group, which provides a range of targeted professional services that offer critical insights in football operations, recruiting, and career development. Justin, good to see you again. How are you? Good, Paul. Thanks for having me on. Additionally, our discussion will include Matt Stolberg. Matt is the Associate Athletics Director for Compliance. Welcome in, Matt. And Vern Squire, the recently retired President and CEO of the Chamber of, Chamber of Business and Industry of Center County, affectionately known here as CBICC. Vern, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Good evening. Thank you for letting me be here. All right. Now all the team is in the right positions. Let's get started and dive into our conversation. I'll start with you, Sandy. Generally, at, at a high level, what is name, image, and likeness? Yeah, that's a great place, obviously, Paul, to start because I think there are uh, there are some misconceptions about it. But you know, really, for me, it, it starts with opportunity. It's about uh, first and foremost, it gives student athletes the opportunity to work with businesses uh, and other organizations to use their brands, their name, image, uh, and likeness, uh, and and they can now be compensated uh, for that. Uh, the opportunity gives them the ability to participate in a variety of activities. Uh, everything from camps and clinics that are owned and operated uh, by our student athletes, which unfortunately uh, prior to was uh, was was not permitted by the NCAA. Uh, endorsements, social media uh, influencers, entrepreneurial activities uh, to build their brand and and to help prepare students for what might come next for them in their careers, both professionally and um, both uh, professional sport, but also uh, perhaps uh, whatever whatever it is their professional career is. Sandy, sticking with you for a second, can you give us a little bit of the timeline on how name, name, image, and likeness came about? It seems like for us, kind of general observers of collegiate athletics, that, wow, July 1st, the whole world changed. But this kind of change doesn't happen overnight. How did we get to where we are? 
Yeah, I mean, this has been has been coming, Paul, for for years. Uh, I, I think the our you know our, our fans that that follow college athletics holistically most closely will remember the Jeremy Bloom case. Uh, it was a skier and a, and a football player, uh, football student athlete at Colorado, uh, who. Um, uh, wanted to be professional in skiing, be able to take endorsements around his skiing skills. Uh, but the NCA said, no, you can't do that if you want to retain your eligibility in, uh, in, in football. So it's, it's been that. It's been uh, the drum has been beating. And frankly, again, uh, every other student on our campuses has had the ability to do this. Now, yes, our student athletes have, uh, have a more robust a little bit larger, uh, more visible platform than most students, but that may, may not be true at Penn State of a, of a student in, in our musical theater department who's uh, going to eventually have a career on Broadway, uh, et, et cetera. So uh, this has been, uh, that the, the drum has been banging for, uh, I would say, you know, uh, outside of, uh, of four or five years. Uh, the NCA was moving in this direction. Uh, we actually last fall, so fall of 20, uh, put together a set of robust uh, uh, guidelines from an NCA standpoint, and we were prepared to vote on them in January. Uh, and then all of the uh, kind of antitrust lawyers uh, got involved, uh, some of the uh, some former student athletes uh, that, that didn't like what they were hearing about the, the guide rail. Uh, and so, so those got killed. Um, and eventually, we got to the point where there had been many states um, that had uh, previously passed name, image, and likeness uh, laws or, or uh, uh, procedures for, that made it permissible for student athletes in their states. Uh, and there, I think there ended up to be about 12, of which Pennsylvania is one of them. And I think we've got a, a really very, very good uh, law. Uh, that streamline, protects students, protects the institution, um, etc. But uh, those were those were scheduled to go into play on July 1st, and so the NCA had to do something. Uh, and what they did was basically uh, put in place what what they're terming interim rules. I'm not sure how interim they're going to be, uh, but uh, with really virtually uh, the, there, there's there's very little to um, to the NCA rules. Uh, most of the teeth is in the state laws. Coach Keeger, I want to bring you into the conversation here. So you hear and have been hearing for years about name, image, and likeness, but July 1, that all of a sudden becomes part of the conversation with recruits. And so how has that policy changed that conversation? How has it changed your recruiting message? Well, I think, Paul, obviously recruiting is uh, an ever-changing, evolving roller coaster, right? And new rules are getting put into place every year. And uh, which teams and programs and universities are able to stay ahead of the game and ahead of the curve are the ones that I think are going to thrive going into the future. But in terms of our message, in all reality, our message stays pretty true to what it's always been is we're going to provide a world-class education and, and life-changing opportunities for our, our young men and women. And we're going we're gonna to sell that brand. You know, we're going to sell a university that will help them become the best version of themselves. And we're going to talk about ways that we can be committed into to building their brand for them now. So now in terms of recruiting, when we go into homes or when we have you know families come into Zoom calls nowadays, but um, we're talking about ways that we can educate them to build their brand and how we're going to help them and how we're going to leverage our um, amazing alumni network and how that can provide an opportunity for them to thrive, not only in their four years here, but like Sandy said, in the next 40 years of their life and provide an opportunity for them to thrive in the workplace as well. Yeah. Coach, let's stick with that amazing alumni network that you just mentioned. You mentioned that uh, from the moment you stepped foot here at Penn State. I remember your uh, opening press conference, you referenced the alumni network. How much is something how much is that something that you emphasize with your current players and recruits on how to kind of tap into the power of the Penn State network? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. It's something we talk about on a weekly basis with our team. You know, we've really um, done a phenomenal job, I think, with um, having a mentorship program with former student athletes and um, getting other alum involved with our program, whether it's being guest speakers or providing opportunities for our, our women to do community service events. And now with name, image, and likeness, that's adds another uh, a component to the ball game. And I think for, for our women, we want to use this as an education component. You know, how do we build their brand that can last? 
And how do we build a professional network for them that they can tap into at any point of their career, whether it's freshman year or senior year, whether they're trying to find a job or whatever it might be, those relationships are what sets Penn State's apart. You know, we have world-class, you know, people that take care of their own and, you know, being here for the last three years, there's nothing like it. This Penn State brand is worldwide and, you know, our, our peers and there's going to be other schools talking about, you know, what big city markets can do for this name, image, and likeness, but there's nothing like having an alumni that we can leverage and that we can work towards. So I think other schools are going to be combating the, the big city atmosphere while we get to use the, the world-class alumni uh, that we have. Absolutely. Well, speaking of former student athletes, uh, we have one of us, one of them joining us tonight, Justin King. Justin, we recently talked about this subject on Football Letter Live, and your company specializes in career development. So from a business perspective, what is your company, LIG Sports Group, looking for when it comes to working with student athletes on name, image, and likeness? Sure. Um, from the standpoint of uh, NIL and looking in the college space, I handle kind of the strategic aspect, working with the group at ECO, and we're looking for scalable assets, right? Looking for scalable assets that provide value to the university, the player, and the team. The university through eventually license and mark, marks opportunities, the players to build their brands, their likeness, and put some money in their pocket, and for the team to help in the recruiting efforts. And with this, you kind of create a beautiful business with the main goal to have like legacy silos and brands within the schools and these uh, hyper-local ecosystems continue to, for the guys to continue to build off, whether it's memorabilia, camps, and things that they can profit off of. Um, moving forward, but it's a, it's a unique mix going into it. And I think it's different for a football team. It's different for individual sport. And it's uh, depending on what the thing is, but based on it being a hyper local thing. So at the end of the day, look at uh, a scalable asset in a, whether individual or a group, a group of players or a position group that can last at a school beyond, you know, just the time a player might be there. You and I were talking just the other day at, at a, interesting angle that I think might be interesting to our audience who's tuning in. You know, there's there's opportunities for athletes to make appearances. Uh, there's opportunities for them to do autograph signings and, and use their name, image, and likeness in that way. You are helping athletes on the merchandising side. Talk a little bit about your work with, with Lockdown U and how st our current student athletes can um, can begin to monetize their name, image, and likeness through merchandising. Right. Like, so when you come talk about merchandising, the, the thing that the guys are building is their name, image, and likeness. When you talk about lockdown, you talk about a group of guys, right? A group of guys that kind of share a authentic, a curated, authentic curated experience, whether they all play DBs at Penn State. Similar background. I had a unique um, thing from recruiting the current players at Penn State having a history of the – of the past and the present with the with the goal of building a legacy brand that those guys can uh, monetize, whether they're selling their jerseys, selling products off of them, having camps when they get done playing, uh, integrate with the NFL players that that play um, DB at Penn State and to help in recruiting efforts, right? When you talk about recruiting, a lot of times people don't realize it is very brand recognition heavy. Right. When you're recruiting a defensive lineman, they might look at a school this way. Or when we're at Penn State, we're recruiting linebackers. It's pretty it's a pretty easy sell because the brand of Penn State linebackers that we produce kind of attracts that that talent. The same way a school uh, engineering program at a school might attract the top engineer. So kind of finding that beautiful business within the in the program to highlight those position groups or individuals that can uh, last. And I think Lockdown U is a, an example where Penn State has produced good defensive backs um, at Penn State, continue to bring them in, recruiting at a high level. And it's one of those, again, beautiful businesses that provide value to the school, players, and the team. Now, Justin, you're advising student athletes um, through your company, somewhat on, on the outside of, of the ivory wall, right? But on the inside, we have coaches and advisors like Matt Stolberg, who is with us tonight. Matt, uh, good evening, and thanks for joining us. What types of questions are you getting from student athletes? Uh, and what's some of the advice that you're sharing with them around name, image, and likeness? Well, the uh, the best part is that we are getting lots of questions. Our student athletes are very interested in NIL. 
Uh, they're very engaged and they've been using all their resources to ask questions uh, and we've been able to give them guidance. Most of their questions are, uh, you know, around uh, some of the components of the state law and um, disclosure. There's really three areas that are the most common questions. And one of them is around disclosure. And that's a key piece of the state law because the, uh, the, the law does require student athletes to give us uh, prior notice uh, that they're in, of their intention to engage in NIL and some of the details about the opportunity and uh, gives us a chance to, you know, look at whether there are conflicts or, or issues associated with the activities. We're not so much approving or denying, but we're, gives us a chance to give them input and steer them in the right direction. Uh, the second area where we're seeing lots of questions is uh, in the sponsorship area. Some of the language in the state law uh, has some protective language around uh, sponsorship sponsorship arrangements that the university has in place. And we've been able to uh, to work through those issues and really to a point where there really aren't any issues um, with <clears throat> university sponsorships and student athletes engaged in uh, NIL activities with a competing brand or whatever the case is. And then uh, the third area is, is really uh, conflict areas. Uh, that are carve outs in the state law about you know alcohol sales or gambling activity and things like that that are some some off limit areas uh, within the state law and we've been able to uh, have a lot of success with our student athletes really getting down to a detailed level there and giving them guidance you know like for instance uh, if they're interested in engaging with a uh, with a restaurant that also serves alcohol we've had success and you know uh, kind of carving that up in a way that where they're promoting like the, the food side of the business and uh, still having an Nil activity where at first it might not have looked like there was an opportunity there so great to hear their questions and love to see that they're so engaged so Matt I want to bring Sandy back into this conversation because you said an interesting word, just a couple minutes ago, you said sponsorship. And so when I think of sponsorship, right, I think of, you know, insert car company or car dealership here, and they're the official car dealership of Penn State football. Is it possible that a car dealership may have the official quarterback of our car dealership is insert name here? Uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, about sponsorship and how there has to be an exchange of, uh, of value between the two entities um, for this to kind of fall under name, image, and likeness. Sandy, I know you have some thoughts on this. Yeah, you know, I think to, to call it, it sponsorship, I mean, uh, sponsorship in, uh, in, in, in certain ways is, it can be a part of this, but you, you Paul, said the, uh, to, to me the, the critical issue uh, this is not just local businesses or, or any business or entity paying our, our student athletes. There's a there's a quid pro quo uh, requirement here, um, and it's about our student athletes engaging with uh, businesses and organizations um, to a mutual benefit here. So. Uh, uh, one, one of the challenging areas of this is the use of the Penn State name and the use of the Penn State marks uh, by our student athletes. Uh, you know, we have a we have a licensing entity at Penn State that's outside of, of intercollegiate athletics that that manages that, and there's some pretty strict rules about that. So your example of the official quarterback uh, of Penn State athletics, our student athletes are not they they don't have the ability to offer that. They can right. offer, you know, their name, their name, their image, and their likeness uh, to partner with uh, with a business or, or an entity, uh, but not necessarily the Penn State name or the Penn State marks. So I want to bring Vern Squire into the conversation here, um, and and would love to get um, other people's perspective on this. Now there are some. There are some guide rails set up around name, image, and likeness. And, and one of those guide rails is that the university has to have an arm's length relationship between the relationships that our student athletes are developing with these companies. We can't be a broker for those types of relationships. And so I think that's where the CBICC has kind of stepped in here to help Vern. Can you talk a little bit about how CBICC got involved um, with Happy Valley Talent and how you got involved into helping with name, helping our student athletes begin to 
uh, put their name out into the marketplace? Sure, Paul. Um, if we go, go back in time, you know, with the uh, rising and maturing discussions with NCAA and the rules that were being promulgated at the time, it was pretty apparent that we were going to have to um, have a community response to this situation because of just what you went through. The university athletics department and others were not able to really actively uh, promote and advise uh, students and certainly the business community, which we represent. So the CBICC, our, our countywide chamber, and then along with uh, Happy Valley Adventure Bureau, our tourism group for the county uh, and the region, uh, along with other affiliate partners, other chambers and business groups, we put together you know, a response that really could be useful in trying to facilitate. It's really not an active brokerage in, in, a, in the context of, uh, of what we're offering, but we're facilitating a moment that we can have athletes, students, alumni, other individuals in the community who can monetize themselves um, available to then the business community and vice versa. We can, if we can promote the business community um, as having opportunities to connect with athletes and so forth. So we've devised a platform that that can occur on. So I think that's uh, one of the responses that we've had to this. We, we, we saw the, the ruling coming, if you will, um, and through conversations with many people, um, again, devised that response. So if I were to go out to happyvalleytalent.com today, what would I find out there, Vern? If you looked at, and again, the website is happyvalleytalent.com. So it's a web-based platform. It is uh, available to the general public as far as the front end, as it's described, or at least the, the front portion of the website, in which over time people will be able to get on and look at, at events that may be occurring or a calendar of events that uh, you can see if somebody's signing an autograph or making a, 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 an appearance, uh, conducting a speech, whatever they're doing uh, over time. Then inside the, the website further in, uh, there's opportunities for businesses to uh, create an, a profile about themselves and then they can you know, essentially highlight what they're interested in from athletes and students and others uh, that are involving themselves in this monetization and or NIL process. And so those businesses can, uh, again, promote um, their contact information, again, who they are, what they do, what they hope to gain by an association with one of the talent uh, components. Then on the student athlete, alum, et cetera side, they too can go in and, and establish a profile about themselves. So this is really their chance to be discovered and be seen in full. This is one of those ironies. The, everybody knows the other exists. So businesses know generally students are out there, athletes are out there, and the same from the athletes and students to the business community. But who they are and how to get a hold of them and do so efficiently and do so equitably and uniformly, that's what our site brings to the table. In fact, we have uh, sample agreements that can be looked at to help even standardize some of the interaction that may occur. So Sandy, you said earlier um, that Penn State worked closely with, I know we worked closely with our Office of Government Relations to help craft the legislation that was eventually passed in the state of Pennsylvania. We know the NCAA has an overarching kind of umbrella over collegiate athletics. So who is who is monitoring uh, name, image, and likeness? Are these NCAA rules that we have to follow? Are they state laws? Is it a mix of both? Yeah, it's it's a mix of, of both. And, and and I do want to make one clarification, Paul. You know, uh, we, we in intercollegiate athletics at Penn State and our government relations office served as a resource uh, right. to our state legislators uh, as they as they crafted uh, they, they were very intent on, they, they wanted uh, student athletes in the state of Pennsylvania to have the opportunity. Uh, they were afraid that, uh, that the NCAA wasn't going to, uh, wasn't going to do anything and, and that Pennsylvania student athletes might be disadvantaged. Uh, so they, uh, and were appreciative of, uh, of their, of their work, but it really is both, uh, again, and, and Matt's our, our, our expert here, but, um, it, you know, the, the, the rules that the NCAA has are very basic. Uh, you know, market market rate, 
uh, must be it must be quid pro quo. It must be in return for uh, for for some something. Uh, and and then um, the, uh, the the Pennsylvania law is much more prescriptive. That's where you find the um, the prohibitions on the on the different categories of alcohol and. Uh, pornography, uh, gambling, casinos, um, uh, weight loss products, uh, uh, and, and then and then we have our own policy. Uh, we have a Penn State policy that then really has a few more categories. Uh, some of them are the same as the state law, um, and, and then a, just a general statement uh, about uh, those that would be in conflict with the values of, of the university. Um, so it's really it's kind of a tripart, uh, a little bit of NCAA. Uh, a big chunk of uh, the state, um, and, and then it kind of closes out uh, with our policy, our Penn State intercollegiate athletics policy, which is really more procedural. Uh, how, how do we at Penn State make sure um, that we inform and, and provide um, process and avenues for our student athletes uh, to stay on the right side of both the NCA and the Pennsylvania law? You know, I think of the leadership style of all of the coaches within our athletic department. And, and one way that I would describe it is that they are all values-based leaders. Uh, I think of every time Coach Franklin gets up to talk, he talks about the five values that drive Penn State football. I've been to uh, Coach Keeger's office suite and the values are, are on display there about what, what you value and, and what your team values. So I know some of your players have, uh, have experience on, they're now TikTok famous, and they're trying to monetize their image uh, through social media. Uh, how do you balance the type of, of values that you want to portray through your basketball program um, and make sure that those values are being portrayed by the students in the marketplace as well? Um, I, I, first of all, I think our student athletes represent us as very well. I, I'm, I'm very proud when they are out in the community representing Penn State. Um, but, but where is the balance between the, ba the brand of women's basketball and the brand of individual athlete that is a women's basketball player? Yeah, I think, Paul, we, we talk a lot about building a brand is like establishing a, a program culture. You know, it starts from the ground up. And first impressions are everything. And, and honestly, on social media nowadays, we really try to educate our players that one mistake can, can last a lifetime. Um, so our goal is to educate them on, on what it looks to be a, a true professional, you know, how to create an image that people want to share, that want to invest in, uh, to help them all become women um, who will only not only dominate on the court, but in the community or in the workplace or in the classroom. Um, so something we stress a lot is using their platform to make others around them better you know, including our university and our community. I'm really proud of our players because they've been using their brand to inspire others, uh, especially younger younger women and younger girls in, in our community. And um, I know some of them have been using their social media and their platforms for uh, good causes and for inspiration to others. And ultimately, at the end of the day, as coaches, and I know that's not just myself, but, but all the other programs here at Penn State, our job is to coach them up to live a legacy and to live a lifetime of impact. And we teach that by branding. All right, Coach Keegs, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Thinking yeah. back to your days as a basketball player at Marquette, what sponsorship would you have immediately accepted or what um, endorsement would you have uh, immediately gone after? I know you're a big Friends fan. Would it, be, yeah. would it have been Central Perk, a, a local <laughs> coffee shop? Well, well, what would it be? I'm not a coffee drinker, but I love to eat and I love a good steak. So probably most steakhouse downtown. If any of you've been to Milwaukee, uh, that was my spot. Um, and then I don't know if, you know, Harley's there. So maybe can you guys see me uh, big handlebars driving down uh, Wisconsin Ave? Yeah, pr probably that. <laughs> Doing I can something see, good for the community. I can see the ads now for Coach Keeger and Harley Owners Group uh, out there. So um Fantastic. Justin and Matt, I'd love to get your input on this. Students, 18 to 22 year olds, right? They're, they're student athletes. They're, they're in their formative years, right? That they're, they're learning a lot about themselves and who they are. And then a lot of money is, at least what would seem like a lot of money to an 18 to 22 year old, is being put in front of some of them. How do you coach them through the decision that you know, this brand is okay to align 
with. And, and this is this is how I'm going to go through the thought process as to whether I'm going to accept this endorsement versus versus some other ones. What does that conversation look like for each of you? I'll, I'll take it. Uh, I think the biggest thing that you want to start off with is protecting your brand. I think the one thing that opened up when the NIL uh, floodgates opened was everyone talking about the opportunities and going after you know, this and building up uh, your social media platform and these different things. But the biggest thing I think is, like Coach, uh, Coach said, was you're starting from the beginning. So you get a chance to protect your brand. So understand where your fit is and authentically curate your experience, what you want to do after the sport that you're playing or what you want to engage with while you're in, in school. And I think that's the, the biggest thing is moving forward is protecting their personal brand and what companies they want to link up with. And hopefully it matches up with what they want to do for the rest of their uh, time after sports. Great. Matt, any thoughts there? Yeah, you know, the uh, the individual consultations that we have with student athletes, uh, uh, you know, are the best part for me because, you know, this is all this is new to all of us, not only on the, uh, you know, administration side, but on the student athlete side It's very new. It's very important. And, uh, you know, we we have been able to give uh, our student athletes access to uh, a team of professional individuals that can really point them in the right directions. And so when they're trying to make decisions about who they're going to associate with or what companies and brands, you know, we're I, I feel like we're able to give them, uh, you know, they, they see the opportunity and like, hey, I'm going to be on TikTok doing this or, or I'm going to make this appearance or whatever the case is. But, you know, we know that there's a lot more to it than that. You know, so we're able to kind of guide them in the direction of evaluating the opportunities more holistically and thinking about, you know, like like you said, the is this a brand that I want to associate with and does this fit with uh, the rest of what I'm doing? And is this going to be feasible from a time management standpoint? Am I still going to have time to do my studies? Am I still going to have time to be an athlete? Uh, is there an opportunity for negotiation here? And, you know, what will the what will the tax consequences of this be? You know, is there going to be withholding on this? Um, am I going to get a, you know, uh, a 1099 on this? Uh, is this something where uh, I'm getting something in kind that will be taxable in the end and stuff? So really just help, helping them through that uh, holistic picture of the opportunity has been fantastic and we have good experts in place for that. You know, Paul, this is this is where I think um, and, and Coach Keeger mentioned this before, where where Penn State w was really ahead of the game. Um, uh, it, it wasn't previously it wasn't necessarily about an NIL opportunity, but we have been um, uh, as a as a student development program throughout uh, Penn State athletics, but but obviously individual programs like what uh, what Carolyn was talking about in women's basketball have really been talking to our student athletes about their personal brands. Um, obviously, social media, the the advent of social media, um, you know, probably 10, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 years ago um, has really brought that to the forefront. So whether it's uh, really focusing from a student development standpoint. Uh, on on personal brands or whether it's been some of the kinds of things that Matt was just talking about uh, we have we have partnered with the uh, Sokoloff uh, financial literacy uh, center uh, for since its inception uh, to uh, to try to help students to understand uh, the the financial impacts of, of some of their decisions and uh, and, and now uh, you know certainly, uh, the, the, the concept of the issue of taxation and 1099s and W-2s and this thing called imputed income that even adults have a problem with or challenge to, uh, to understand why their paycheck might be short on, uh, on, on some particular occasion. It's all things that, um, you know, my hope is that, uh, that nobody will stub their toe too badly. Uh, we, we know there, there are going to be some slips and falls or trips and falls or, or whatever, uh, but, but we're here uh, to, to help them through it. Uh, and, and in the end, where I started with the comments here, this is about education. This is about them learning. This is about them becoming uh, better and more experienced and more qualified human beings. Um, and we think every aspect of, of, of this experience helps them. But you know, Penn State didn't start this on July 1. Penn State Athletics didn't start this on July 1. Um, and it's also, again, where our alumni uh, are vast uh, and, and experienced uh, and passionate alumni come into play because 
they've been helping us with mentorship programs for decades. Right. Vern, I want to bring you back into the conversation here, maybe from, from, a, from a different angle, from the business owner's angle. What advice are you giving to uh, CBICC members on how they might be thinking about name, image, and likeness? And if you could think about it from, um, from the business perspective, what are they looking for in terms of uh, student athletes to work with? Well, it's interesting. I'll, I'll answer those in reverse order, Paul. The, the, the newness of this, the uniqueness of this moment, um, given history, is that the businesses have not been you know, able to establish a pattern of engaging talent on a monetization basis uh, in, in time past. And so they're going through this kind of learning curve, if you will. Um, and again, I point uh, to the site that we have uh, as a way for the businesses to register themselves. At least that's a central point. A business can go out and solicit and, and contact an athlete or a student or an alum on their own to uh, make, make an appearance at their institution. And, and But that means that then they have, still have to comply and, and the, certainly the student and athlete, uh, the athletes in particular do, um, per what Sandy and others have talked about on this call. What I would say, though, is um, we want to encourage this. It's very important that this happens. The, the, think of it this way. The students are unable to, to monetize themselves unless there's a marketplace that will accept them to do that. And in turn, from a business perspective, we want them to put themselves out there to let the students and athletes and alums know that there are um, those opportunities available. I do want to explain two things. I keep mentioning alums. We've actually had contact from NFL agents and some other folks um, asking if alumni can um, list themselves on the site. So this is not restricted to the university. I, know, I understand the focus here being principally for those that are, are currently in, in, enrolled and such, but this has legs, if you will, beyond that. So the businesses and uh, uh, others if, by the way, if businesses are a member of, of our groups, including our affiliate partners, there's no charge for them to get into the site, put that detailed information into play. From the students and athletes and uh, perspective, there's no charge for them to get in and do the same. So I think we want to be clear, this is something we're really trying to do to put out there, create a marketplace that can really be effective. We're also trying to, to um, make it accommodating to the alum side. We'll be making some modifications to the site shortly about that. But um, it's a, just an ongoing effort to expose opportunity and have the business community really help um, educate and attract the, the student and athlete clientele that they may be able to get out of this deal. So you, you said something that sparked a thought that, that individuals may be able to engage student athletes in name, image, and likeness. So if I want a field hockey player to come to my daughter's birthday party, is, is that something that I can engage a student athlete in? Very much so. Um, so I know we're talking principally on this call about businesses at large, but yes, individuals can do that. And we also, let's also think in, in mediums, meaning the, the way they could do that. So in person, that would be hoped for certainly and probably more, more common. But uh, a business uh, from afar, one of your alums around the world could at a, at a corporate board meeting, as an example, host an athlete by Zoom call or some other platform that's very similar. So I think through electronic means as well as in person, there are many opportunities that uh, especially the alumni here could take advantage of. Yeah, I'd like to, to hear Sandy's thoughts on that. So uh, alumni uh, around the world are, are listening to this and wanting to know how they can be involved. What are, what are some thoughts uh, that, that you have on how alumni might be able to help our student athletes? Yeah, I think there are a couple of layers uh, to, to this, Paul, and, uh, and I'll start where you just left off, which is on the individual basis. So um, and anyone can engage uh, a student athlete in, uh, in NIL activities, again, it is, uh, there, there needs to be an activity. So it needs to be, you're being paid for uh, an appearance uh, of some sort at some event. You're being paid to, uh, to provide autographs. You're being paid to uh, provide lessons uh, for, uh, for, some, for someone or someone's son, son or daughter. So that individual basis is, uh, is appropriate. Um, I'd say that the next layer are the chapters. 
Um, and, and I'll be quite honest, we're, we're trying to work our way uh, through that with, uh, with our Office of, of General Counsel, uh, because we talked before about the university is not allowed to, uh, to, to be to broker or be involved in arranging NIL activities. Um, so we need to, to come to a conclusion as to where the what's the status of the chapters? Are the chapters considered the university or, or are they not? Um, but if, if in the end, if the chapters are not, then the chapters could, uh, could be involved in uh, inviting student athletes, paying student athletes to come and do an appearance, do an autograph session, uh, do, 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 something, do some kind of presentation. Um, and then the, the furthest end of this is the actual alumni association. Uh, and the alumni association is the university. Uh, it is considered uh, unequivocally the, the university and therefore would be just like the athletic department or just like any part of campus, they would not be involved. I'll give you a, a great, an, it's an unfortunate example, but it's a great example of the university. Uh, we did have some inquiries from the creamery uh, early on and, and unfortunately the creamery is a part of the university and therefore would not be, uh, be able to uh, provide NIL uh, activity and NIL compensation uh, for student athletes. But if I'm, you know, if I'm an alum in Philadelphia and I'm involved in my, my local little league, I can engage Penn State athletes to come down and do a hitting clinic. I can engage our swimmers in swim camps. I can, if I'm running a professional development seminar for the company that I work at, I can engage student athletes to come and, and speak at those types of things. So it's much, it's much broader, I think, of opportunities for alumni to be able to participate in this than we might have originally thought where it's, it seemed like, you know, local car dealership has student athletes saying, come on down and, and you know, and, and buy a car from us. Yeah, I think Paul, the one the one that you mentioned, and, and it's one that that student athletes have have really um, kind of been very insistent about for for years is this. You know, why can't they can go work camp? They could go work camps, but why can't they have their own camp and have it branded the you know the Sandy Barber camp? Uh, and uh, and and that was uh, for years not permissible, um, and now the, rid, the the lid's really been taken off of that. So certainly, whether it's Fee for fee for lesson. Uh, uh, run your own camp. Put your name on your camp. Brand your camp, um, and use your, uh, your 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 sport ability, sport ability, your athletic talent uh, to, uh, to to make money. Uh, that's wide open now. So let's um, let's put some misconceptions to bed here. We have a question coming in from Kate. Kate wants to know: Does the university get a percentage of the money that our student athletes earn? No, they, they do not. These are their these are their businesses. Again, we're not uh, we're not interfering. We're not brokering. We're not, and and we're also not uh, not taking uh, not taking a percentage. Uh, Judy Wolf from out in California has a great question here. Her, her first question is: This applies to all student athletes across all thirty one sports at Penn State. That is correct. Uh, but uh, here's the question that she has uh, that I think is really poignant. You mentioned seven or eight states that have legislation around name, image, and likeness. I think uh, it's I think it's thir 13, Matt. 13. That sounds right, yes. Yeah. 13 does it apply the same to in-state and out-of-state students? And does it apply to, if I'm a student from Florida and I'm home for the summer, am I playing by the same rules that I would be playing by as if I were in Happy Valley. I'm going to let Matt take that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we would, um, you know, they're Penn State student athletes. We would view it through, um, the, you know, a Penn State lens. And, uh, you know, we would look at it, um, you know, relative to our state law uh, as to how that goes. And, and um, you know, a lot of it is based on where the activity takes place, though. Uh, I, I'll give you an example from uh, international circles. There's been a lot of discussion about international students and their engagement in NIL. And, uh, you know, if they're if they're uh, in there's a restriction on them engaging in NIL activities uh, when they're here in America on an F1 visa. And, you know, so even if they're doing an activity uh, for their home country, 
you know, those restrictions apply when they're when they're here in the United States and they're not able to do that, even though the product is, uh, you know, essentially in another country. So we'd kind of view it in the same lens. We would look at it from where the student athlete is primarily. But that's a that's a little bit of an emerging issue, too, with kind of the patchwork uh, of NIL laws and many states not having a law. Uh, so I think like in the domestic sense, uh, we would we would look at it really through through the Penn State lens first and Pencil State of Pennsylvania lens first, and then look at whether there's a state law secondarily. Matt, can you talk us through what type of reporting the student athletes are required? Um, if I, I'm a student athlete, I sign a name, image, and likeness deal, who do I report that to? Absolutely, they, uh, we have given our student athletes a tool that they can carry around in their pockets. Uh, you know, it is a uh, phone-based uh, app that includes uh, not just a, a quick and easy disclosure tool where they can, you know, probably usually in about 45 seconds to a minute, um, provide a disclosure that will electronically flow to our team of professionals that uh, kind of reviews these and provides input. Um, you know, so the, so that's quick and easy that way. And really like, we want to know things like, uh, you know, who are you working with and, uh, how are you being compensated, uh, et cetera. And this, the same tool includes lots of other NIL related resources, such as, uh, educational guidance and contact information and where to go with questions and things like that. But, uh, the disclosure piece is really about eight questions. Uh, it's electronic, it's quick and easy, and it is required by the law. So, uh, that's the reason we've made it so easy and and so uh, technology based. So let me let me turn that around to 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 Sandy and Coach Keegs. We're collecting data on this, right? We know uh, athletic departments compete with other athletic departments uh, on, on everything, right? We we track wins and losses. We track graduation rate. We track it. We track everything we can, right? Are we tracking from a Big Ten perspective or from an NCAA perspective the quantity of NIL agreements that students are signing at Penn State and comparing that to what other Big Ten institutions are doing or other NCAA institutions? Yeah, Paul, that's a great question. I, I mean, we certainly are tracking what, what our current student athletes are doing. Uh, we also know that we don't have a full handle on, on the full body. We may, we may get their disclosure, um, but sometimes it's for, as Justin was talking about, you know, they're doing some apparel. Well, we don't know what their sales end up, end up being, uh, but we, we are tracking it as closely as we can. What we don't know is what is necessarily what others are doing. Um, some of it is being reported in the media, um, but but I'll tell you this, and 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 Keeks can can comment on this <laughs> in a minute. You know, when we get to next summer, um, we will need to be using the experiences of our student athletes this year, and and, and uh, honestly, it'll it's before that, but we'll, but we'll have a full year's worth of of work to be telling prospective student athletes. Here are the kinds of things that our Penn State student athletes are participating in. Here are some examples of results. Um, and that's going to be an important factor moving forward uh, from a recruiting perspective. And I think, Paul, it's for us in, in terms of our sport, and I think other coaches would probably attest to this as well, it's very early um, for us to know what other people are doing or uh, um, other players are getting. I think you see um, the top players in the country, you see ads and stuff that's happening on um, social media or in the media. Uh, but in terms of individual programs, um, I think it's too hard for us to tell right now. And like Sandy said, I think this off season and this summer will, will tell us a lot, but we really want to focus on Penn State right now and providing the opportunities in the best possible scenarios for our student athletes to thrive. So we are coming up on our time limit here tonight. I want to go around the horn, though, and give everyone the opportunity for one final word on the name, image, and likeness topic. And I'll start with Justin King. Justin, what, th what did we miss? What didn't we talk about tonight that Penn State alumni should know about? Uh, that Penn State alumni should know about. Um, I think it's just very important to engage. I think NIL is a hyper-local 
uh, type of situation in the power of Penn State is where it comes into this uh, ecosystem of the NIL. You know, it's not like we have, uh, like, we're not built on a Fortune 500 CEO here or there and just, like, giving big money, like Sandy said earlier. But it was, like, the power of the alumni association and things of that nature. So the biggest thing that I experienced when I graduated from Penn State is when I started training kids in Dallas, Texas, and I tapped into the alumni association. And a lot of my business kind of blew up from just – um, operating with Penn State clients, and that was in Dallas, Texas. And from that standpoint, that was after I was done playing in the NFL. But we can, you know, move that up to support the, you know, current student athletes um, on the field, on the court, individual Olympic sports, all the way through, and just show the power of Penn State all the way up to, you know, uh, athletes, students coming out of high school. Um, and it's just that's that's my last thing on it. Matt, how about you? I, th I think the uh, the piece that sticks out for me is is just the newness of it all, and you know uh, the the knowledge base uh, you know really spans a, a, a really uh, enormous continuum of I'm not sure what NIL stand for stands for to uh, the people who are so far down the road that that you know they've er they've already engaged in it uh, they've already talked to student athletes or or agents or. Uh, they're pretty far down the road. And, and I think that enormous range really just speaks to the need for information and uh, resources on where to ask questions and how to do this right. And uh, Penn State has such a such a wonderful group of alumni that uh, all want to do things the right way. And we want to give them resources to uh, to direct their questions to and, and really create a great environment for our student athletes the right way. So I think just getting the information out is the big piece for me. Vern, final thoughts? Uh, two very quick. One, the alumni can be very supportive of this, uh, as we talked about earlier, but there's a hybrid model we didn't talk about, and that is uh, an alum may have a favored business in the community that they like to support. They could actually get together with that business to help cause this activity to happen. Sometimes the business resources straight away, especially post-COVID, may not be as robust as they once were. So, you know, think cooperative power in making this happen. The other thing is to for the students and athletes and also the businesses be consistent and clear in your in their expectations and you know when they're striking these deals document them appropriately execute them well tell the world about it and, and that's what's going to help drive this forward so that's certainly our commitment to this as well is to, to promote this forward help our economy help the effort overall thanks Vern. coach keegs yeah, Paul, I think I would say that, um, you know, this is a phenomenal opportunity for alumni to give back and pay it forward and, and help prep the next generation um, of leaders and of people in the workforce. I think for us as coaches, in order to stay competitive in the name, image and likeness field and in that realm, we're going to need the alumni and we're going to need them strong and uh, we're going to need them to come in full force to, to help us recruit talented young people and let them know that this is the best brand in the entire world. And um, just we're one big happy family and community. I'm not going to let you go tonight without telling us a little bit about your team. You're about three weeks <laughs> from tipping the season off. How do you feel about your team and what can we expect from the Lady Lions? Yeah, I, I feel phenomenal about where we're headed. Um, I think we've done a phenomenal, great job building culture these last two years and getting us ready for this year three to kind of take off and really make our, our mark and, and build our brand. So our young women have been working really hard. We start November 9th. Um, we're going to need each and every one of you to, to help us along this way. But the goal is to get us back to the tournament. And uh, we need you in the stands back in the BJC. So thanks, Paul, for the plug. Absolutely. <laughs> Sandy, final word on name, image, and likeness. Yeah, you know, first of all, I, I, I want to say thanks to, to Vern and the CBICC. Their, you know, their their work on this has been phenomenal, and I think, uh, you know, what he was just talking about, what, what he just closed with, is uh, is really great advice. And um, and then finally, I, I want to combine uh, Justin and, and and Coach Keeger's comments. It, this is, uh, you know, this is this is another opportunity for the power of, of Penn State uh, to shine through. Um, there, is, there is no better advantage um, that, that any student has at Penn State than 750,000 strong uh, alumni. There's so much power in that from a career standpoint, from a brand standpoint, from a networking standpoint. And, uh, and this is one of those places um, where, uh, you know, engage. 
please, please engage. Uh, obviously, it's not for everyone, uh, but uh, but a lot of the, the Penn State Nation, um, it is it is for it fits. It fits with your organization. It fits with your business. It fits with what you might be doing from a neighborhood or, or, or a family standpoint. And and you all know our student athletes are tremendous young men and young women. They're they're great representatives of not only the university, um, but will be you know will be alumni soon. And, uh, and and we appreciate you uh, you being on tonight, wanting to learn more about this and, and how you can help because this is obviously uh, one of the ways, uh, one of the many ways, uh, but one of the ways that uh, that you can help us be great. Thank you, Sandy. That's all the time we have tonight. On behalf of everyone here at the Alumni Association, I'd like to thank all of our guests. We also want to thank you for tuning in this evening. This discussion was recorded and will be archived. Uh, on our website or on YouTube, our YouTube page and other channels. So visit those channels to get uh, access to the recording of this. Additionally, we'll share the link in the coming days. Across the bottom of the screen, you just saw it, statements at athletics.psu.edu. If you have other questions to ask about name, image, and likeness, you can send an email to statement at athletics.psu.edu. Um, with other questions that you might have. If you're a chapter leader out there tuned in tonight, call your regional director and find out how your chapter can participate um, in engaging student athletes through name, image, and likeness. We are so grateful for how you extend the Penn State experience to Penn Staters wherever they are around the world. And of course, for more information, you can always go to happyvalleytalent.com. Again, special thanks to Vern Squire for being here with us tonight. The archive video will include all the features and options that were available on the audience console, and you can refer to them whenever you'd like throughout watching this over and over again at your leisure. As a reminder, you can view a full listing of alumni association events, both virtual and in-person at our website at alumni.psu.edu. Thank you for all you do for the university, for the glory, and for the future. We are.